my God of the ages, you that spoke a new word 500 years ago and, and blessed the entire Christian church by that word and not only the speaking but opening up hearts and spirits to hear it. And Lord, we join ourselves to all those of all the ages who, who listen and hear your word and, and shift our lives accordingly, take new steps, sometimes scary, many times adventurous, often difficult, but always rewarding, for they are, they are your steps on the great journey of life and life together. So we thank you for all ways in this particular church family that you are at work, that you're guiding us forward, you are reforming us day by day, including this worship service here, in which we will leave different than we enter. And we give you thanks and praise that you are still the great mover of our hearts, our spirits, our church. Only one we ask that your great moving of hearts and spirits would be strong in, in, in body and spirit for people that are near and dear to us, and we've named some of those. We ask your blessings out of the university, for all the young and not so young folks that are uh, in very, very special years where they are being reformed for your future for them. And Lord, how we pray that you would reform hearts worldwide, that peace might break forth, that your law and your covenant would be written on the hearts of all people in all places, to love each other, to love you. Lord, these are great things for us to ponder and important. Hear us now as we open up our prayers before you, from the silence of our hearts, to speak and to listen. Now, Holy One, lift us up from who we have been and unfold for us who you created us to be, dreamed us to be, and are reforming us to be. Help us to be your agents, your people, your church in your world. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and we seal our prayers with the prayer he taught us all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Most 
some here at our church in our mission program and our worship. I'm going to have a few folks come forward and give their answers. So Dave and Carla, Marcy, uh, Chris is going to fill in uh, for one, and Carol and Debbie. If you'll come forward, grab a microphone, and let's hear what their responses were, even as you ponder what your responses would be to the question of how do you sense God's touch most strongly at work here at this church? Dave? I sense God's touch our church the most uh, strongly when we reach out to the community. I sense God's touch in our church most strongly when I'm sitting in the pew, engulfed in the organ music, music preparing for the service to begin. I sense God's touch at our church most strongly when I sit in a pew and let thoughts come and go unbidden and undirected. A spiritual sensitivity session that brings solace, inspiration, and perspective. This thought comes from Bill Crum. I sense God's touch at our church most strongly when we pray together. I sense God's touch at our church most strongly when I help serve communion. I sense God's touch at our church most strongly when I'm in the presence of our congregation, reaching out to help others, as we do in our migrant mission, by touching the lives of individuals and families that may feel forgotten and marginalized. I feel the power of Christ through our congregation's general acts of compassion, kindness, and care. What would your answers be, folks? Let's spend the next two weeks considering that and then how we would uh, respond to God with our time and our talent and our treasure. November 12th will be our dedication Sunday. Thank you very much, folks, for sharing. And at this point, we'll invite the ushers to please come forward to receive our morning tithes and offerings.
us and all we have and are to reform this church and reform our community and reform this world. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>